So I have a few reflections today. The first is all of these flowers. Can everybody see the flowers on, oh, is it? Did they hear me or not, the gospel? Okay, very good. Okay, now it is good. Right. Uh, the first is all these flowers. You know why? What was going on yesterday? It was the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And this is the original painting, a copy, an original version, an exact repl replica from the Basilica in uh, Mexico City. And it's signed right there on the, on the bottom. And we have it. So that's why it's so very special for us to venerate. And today is the third Sunday of Advent, which is Rejoice Sunday. The opening prayer says, we are always called to solemn worship and rejoicing in our life. Now, Our Lady of Guadalupe is not just important for Mexicans. This is not a Mexican. She appeared in Mexico, but she is important for all of us in our faith as Catholics. Our Lady of Guadalupe is the only image of the Catholic world that came down directly from heaven. So like the merciful Jesus that you have in the back there, take a, uh, turn around and take a look at the merciful Jesus, okay? Now, you know where that comes from. That's a painting of the merciful Jesus from Krakow, Poland, painted by a Polish, uh, as Jesus appeared to a Polish nun, and according to her visions, a painter painted that picture of the merciful Jesus, but it is not something that came down from heaven. Whereas Our Lady of Guadalupe came down directly from heaven on the tilma, that's the cloak of St. Juan Diego. So it's like a, a selfie from heaven. Now you understand why it's so important? It's like having a divine selfie. So ev that's why everybody needs to have an Our Lady of Guadalupe because it's the only image in the Catholic world that comes directly from heaven. Now, some things to point out that I pointed out yesterday and that I need to point out to all of you because there's no coincidences. There's a reason why the Lord on this third Sunday is calling us to live rejoicing. Our Lady of Guadalupe appears. Take this image here so you can look at it better. Okay, take a look. She appears with her hands folded. She's an athlete. She appears as an Aztec lady. Okay, so you see her, her hands are folded. What does that mean? Everybody knows what that means. That means she's praying. Did you hear the first prayer today, the opening prayer? We are always to live our lives in solemn worship. So you, you're not just called to prayer in church, okay? You have to pray at all times in your life. The Bible says you are to pray without ceasing. I'll remove it. Right? I should, I'll hold it. Okay. You are to pray without ceasing. That's what the Bible says. So you have to make prayer your life. Your life has to be a prayer. People rub me the wrong way if they come to church and, you know, they're like, oh, you know, mm. They don't say hi to anybody or if somebody's saying hi to somebody, I got to pray right now. Shut up. Father, they would come to the sacristy and say, so-and-so is talking. I want to pray. Well, why don't you say hi to them, you know? I mean, you know, and, and tell them, you know, maybe I can have a little quiet time or something, you know. Be, be nice about it. But you shouldn't just be coming to church to pray. You should be praying at all times of your life. We don't want to be 
the type of Catholic who, you know, in church eats saints and then, you know what I mean? You know, fills themselves with holiness and then in the house, in your house or in your work, you go around uh, pooping the devil, okay? Don't be pooping the devil without using another, I've got another term for that, okay? You know, in other words, you have to be the same here, at home, at work, everywhere. Because God is everywhere. You should be breathing prayer in your life. And then what else does the blessed image of Our Lady of Guadalupe teach us? That we are to live our life at all times praying. That prayer has to be our life. But then she appears with her knee bended. Now remember, she's an Aztec. So for the Aztecs, this was a sign. When you had your knee like this, that's an Aztec sign. You, you, you get what I'm saying here? Okay. When you have your knee bended like this, it's an Aztec sign that she is dancing. So she appears praying and dancing. Okay. Praying and dancing. What does that mean? Praying and rejoicing. Did you hear the second reading today? Paul says, rejoice always, I say to you. Rejoice, I say it again, he says, and repeats it. Now, if the Bible repeats something, that means, you know, it's a pretty important thing. To always be rejoicing in our life. In the midst of our advents. Meaning in the midst of all that we wait for in our life. We are always called to rejoice, to live our life rejoicing at the coming of the Lord. In the midst of our sufferings, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of uh, a virus, whatever we are facing in our life, in the midst of our loneliness, in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our health troubles, you have to be praying and rejoicing. And that's what we did yesterday. Right? We were praying all day. I mean, we had mariachi from the morning on up. Okay? And we had a group, a band. I mean, it was just, it was great. It was absolutely fantastic. And all day, uh, food, everything was sold out. You know, everything. So, uh, it was just an... an uh, Two goats gave their life to, how do you say borregos? I forgot. Um, how do you say borrego? Yeah. Lambs? Yeah. Oh, or rams. Rams. Two rams gave their life. Uh, oh my, it was just, I, I think they made like 8,000 pupusas and it's just unreal, okay? All day. Uh, selling uh, food to go. I think we had 7,000 tamales. I, I wanted 10,000, but we never got to that, okay? Uh, and so, it, it was just an, uh, a, a wonderful day. And on Friday, it was raining horribly. Did you remember, you know, Friday it was raining, raining, raining. It's raining right now. Really bad. It, uh, and yet, yesterday it was 80% it was supposed to rain. Did it rain one drop? No. Not one drop. And the sun was out. It was very warm. It was just, wow. Which teaches me because I was so worried. I said, you know, how are we going to do all of this outside? Because we have to do everything outside. Okay. How are we going to do it all outside? with r r rain and storms and all that, God took care of it for his mother. How wonderful. Jesus took care of it all because he wanted his mom to have a great celebration. And then I want to point out something else. You know, supposedly we are in the poorest county in all of California. And in the, supposedly, according to, you know, statistics in like 
one of the worst cities in, in California. And the low, that which is low, gets picked up. God raises the lowly because everywhere else nobody had a celebration like we did for Our Lady of Guadalupe. <laughs> How wonderful that God kind of gives you a, a boost to say, you know, it's not as bad as you think it is. I'm with you. Just pray and rejoice, and it will all be fine. And that's what I said to the young 14-month-old Matthew yesterday that I uh, presented for the protection of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which I will do for what's what's the what's your baby's name? Aria. Aria. Okay, that's what I will do. She's crying a little bit, but right now. But yesterday I presented, like Jesus was presented in the temple. Babies are presented in the temple. And Matthew was born 14 months ago with his intestines outside of his body, exposed totally. He was at UC, UCSF in San Francisco at the Children's Hospital. And when his parents came to see me, they live here in Clear Lake, uh, last year, there was almost no hope of him ever being put back together. Fourteen months ago, on Friday, they picked him up from the hospital. They brought him home. He's pooping. You have no idea how important that is, okay? Next time you want to rejoice when you're on the toilet, okay, and you, and you take a dump, Okay, rejoice. You should be rejoicing. I mean, that, you know how important that is? Have you ever thought about that? We are to rejoice at all times, including when you're on the throne. <laughs> you laugh, but that is so true. Because they were waiting. The, the last thing that Matthew needed to do was to go to the bathroom. And they let him go on Friday in time for the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe because as they reminded me, you told us to give him to the protection of the Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Guadalupe, because they came last year. They reminded me they came to see me because he was born right around this time. And they came to see me exactly around this time as I was getting ready for the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe last year. And I told them, give your son over to the Blessed Mother and everything will be okay. A day before the celebration, Matthew comes home and he doesn't just come home, but he comes home pooping and eating. And his intestines all put together, everything functioning. And you can watch this all on Facebook at the 12 o'clock mass yesterday. It was all recorded. And I was just so moved. I was crying myself yesterday at the 12 o'clock mass that I had because his father was crying. Everybody was just, it was so moving, the miracles that the Lord gives us. And that's what I want all of you to do in your own life. Pray at all times. Give all of your troubles, all the things you're going through, Give it all to the Lord. Give your children to the Blessed Mother. And I have a gift for all of you that showed up today. You know what I'm going to give you? For free. Is, oh, there she is, Margarita. Each of the people, everybody that is here can take a, a flower home with them, okay? Because they're blessed. I bless them and I said prayers over them of exorcism. So you get to take blessed flowers to your home. 
because they're going to wither here anyway. So I want you all to take, give them some flowers to take home with them, okay? And then the same thing we'll do at the 12 o'clock because I don't want any of the flowers here during the week because it's better that they're in your house. And then when they dry up, since they're blessed, it's a sin for you to throw them away. You don't throw blessed things away. So when they wither away, just dry them up and spread them all over, outside of your home, inside, okay? Don't throw them away because they are now the roses of the Blessed Virgin Mary for you to take home with you. You get to take roses. Remember, she, when, the, when Juan Diego opened the tilma, the roses fell out. So you get to take some roses with you. You see how blessed you are? Another sign of the Lord that everything is just going to be okay in our life. We get through everything in our life. We just have to always pray and rejoice. Hmm? That's what... Nobody's going to want to be a Catholic if we have funeral faces and if Mass is a funeral. It ain't. Or if we are all about, you know, vinegar faces, or I have other terms for that. No, we have to live rejoicing, smiling. Why do you think I always tell you jokes, you know, and try to make you laugh? Because that's, life is hard enough as it is. When I was in the seminary, we had one of our professors, he was 86 years old, and he was the best one. And he used to say, Gentlemen, he was a priest, okay, he'd say, gentlemen, and I use that word lightly, okay, he'd say, when you become a priest, if, because, you know, we were still in the seminary, on Sunday, if you can make your people laugh, do it, because they've had a very hard week. You've all had a hard week, haven't you? Everybody, you know, you've all got your stuff that you're going through, hmm? And then you come to church or you're watching me on Facebook or on YouTube and you're getting filled with hope and love and gas. You're getting filled with gas. Don't pass it, but just gas, you know. <laughs> Somebody said to me, uh, you know, we had the novena nine days praying the novena to Our Lady of Guadalupe. And Our Lady in Pompeii said, anybody who prays a novena, she will grant all their requests. Maybe that's what, before Christmas, nine days. I think we're kind of nine days out right now, are we not? Starting tomorrow, probably be nine days, right? Okay, maybe that would be a good thing. Google that, novena, and do it before Christmas. Every day praying the rosary. Do you all pray the rosary every day? I bet you not, because you're too busy watching Judge Judy. <laughs> but this lady who came every single day, young lady, she's about 30-some years old, she came every single day to the novena. And I asked her, I said, why do you come every single day? Because, you know, most people... This came one day, you know, another, okay? And she says, Father, where else can I go for somebody to tell me the Lord is with you? Where else? Can you go to the casino and hear that God is with you and everything's going to be okay? Where else can you go? To the nightclub or, you know, where else can you go? To the bar? Where else can you go? To the bottle or wherever, you know? Where else can you go to hear or to a drug or, you know, where else can you go in order to hear that God is with you? Where can you go? You go to church 
we come, we celebrate, and we hear those soothing words that God is with us. And if God is with us, everything will be okay. That's what gave comfort to Mary. That's why she could live rejoicing. She didn't have an easy life, did she? I'm speaking. Did she have an easy life? Imagine being found with child at 12 years old. Do you know what the punishment was for a woman who was found with child not being married? Stoning! She was going to be stoned. You think she had an easy life and then becoming a refugee? Escaping? Not being able to give birth under normal circumstances, but in a, in, the fil in a filthy cave with animals, with feces? You think she had an easy life and then I could go down, you know, down the road? No. She didn't have it easy, neither do you. But she heard something. What did she hear? Here. What did the angel tell her? Hail Mary. What does hail mean? Do you know what that means? All you biblical scholars. Hail means you are healthy. No, in Spanish it comes out better. Dios te salve. No, or in Polish we say zdrowaś Maryjo. No, Ave Maria, gracia plena. No, other languages say it much better. But hail, it's a, it's a greeting of health. You are okay, Mary, the angel says. That's what the angel wants to tell you today. That you are okay. And why are you okay? I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Why are you okay? Hello, hello. Why are you okay? Did you ask yourself that question? Why are you okay? Because you live in the United States? Because... You got money, is that why you okay? Because you got a place to live? You got food, is that why you okay? Hello? No. You know, you are okay because the Lord is with you. You get it? That's why you okay. Period. I'm finished for today. <laughs> Let's stand today and oh actually maybe you want me to do the presentation now is that okay let's present aria okay come on up with her did she eat just now i hope she doesn't vomit <laughs> oh it's always nice to present the babies and to hold them and everything then give them back so let's present aria Okay. You want to? Okay. Uh, maybe we can take the blanket off so she, you can have better pictures. Okay. Hold her for just a second. You want to remove her from the blanket? Maybe. Okay. When was she born? A month ago? My goodness. Oh, and then you bought her this beautiful dress at the flea market. <laughs> Look at her. Wow. She, you must have... Wow, my goodness. She's absolutely gorgeous. Take pictures. Pictures for Facebook. Pictures. We need pictures here. Oh, my gosh. Can everybody see this? Yeah, okay. Everybody, can you all see her? All right. See, in the midst of everything, you know, you, uh, there's always new life. There's always hope. Hmm? You taking a video or pictures? Okay, that's good. <laughs> so we present her to the protection of the Blessed Mother, okay? Ugh. Yeah, go ahead.
Okay. Okay. Oh, somebody talked too long. Look. <laughs> All right. Okay. Amen. Okay. Great gift for you all. And now you guys are her godparents too. So now you have to say comadre and, uh, and compadre. Okay. Co-parents. There she is, all presented. And then you had uh, things you wanted me to bless. Let me bless those things. You have... Do you have, did, you buy a, did you buy a candle or no? No, that's okay. That's fine. Isn't that wonderful? Cannot encourage people to have more and more children. Oh, how beautiful. There. Perfect. All blessed. So let's stand and profess our faith today. As we are warmed up here, not just by the heat that's in, but by the celebration, we say, I believe in one God, everybody, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. And is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we rejoice today at the gift of our faith during this Advent season, as we await the birth of our own hope in our life, the candle, the pink candle. Hopefully everybody can see it. Can you see the pink candle? All right. Remember, you're called to rejoice, so you're going to do something rejoicing today, okay? Make your, make your husband in a nicer meal today than usual, okay? Uh, have some ice cream or something. You know, do something rejoicing. I don't know what would be a rejoicing thing to remind ourselves of the need always to rejoice in our life as we pray. We pray that the joy of our faith may enter into the lives of our family members, those who are depressed and lonely, those who feel anxious or alone, that that joy of God's presence in their life may be born anew, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick, those in hospitals, those in nursing homes, all those who are struggling in their life with their health, that the joy of the Lord, His presence, may come upon them and be born in their lives, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for ourselves, for the joy of the gospel to penetrate our hearts, 
So why don't you put your hand on your heart right now and just ask the Lord, say, Lord, I want you to fill me with the joy this Christmas season, this Advent. I want to feel that joy in the midst of my own Advents. Allow me to always live praying and dancing. We pray to the Lord. And all of us, let us remind ourselves that as it's raining outside, there's always rain and storms going on, but we are called to dance in the midst of the storms. So we pray for that grace to be like Mary, always praying and dancing in the midst of any rain, in the midst of any storm, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. And I want to remind all of you as we take up our offering today uh, that our Christmas season is December 24th, Christmas Eve, Mass here at 4 p.m. in English and the next day at 9 a.m. December 25th will be 9 a.m. December 24th at 4 p.m. So two Masses and the drive-in Mass for St. Joseph Church in Middletown in English. Christmas Eve is at 2 o'clock, those who are watching, and Christmas Day at 10.30. Those are drive-ins. So this year, um, we have special permission to have Christmas Eve Mass starting at 2 o'clock. So that's why I have 2 o'clock over there, 4 o'clock here, and uh, the next day, 9 a.m., and then 10.30, and then the Spanish schedule. Um, I'll make sure to figure that one out, when to do Masses in Spanish for Christmas. But plan on coming 4 p.m. Christmas Eve and 9 a.m. Christmas Day here at Queen of Peace in that St. Joseph's in Middletown at 2 p.m. on Christmas Eve and at 10.30 on Christmas uh, Day. So, and the Masses over there are drive-in Masses, so... Um, Say a prayer for me today because it's, I have to be outside. Everybody gets to be in their car with their heater turned up, you know, full blast. So it's probably a way to get me to not talk so much. <laughs> but it, it, will all, it will all be well. We will all just be absolutely fine. Did, we pass, did, did you all bring your... Uh, Christmas flower envelopes? How many brought back their Christmas flower envelopes? Anybody still need to make a donation? Okay, can you, pa can you pass those out? That's a do if you could make a donation. These flowers will obviously not be here because they're not going to last until the 24th. So we have to buy a whole set of uh, new decorations and new flowers, particularly for all those people who will come only on Christmas. We want to make sure that they have a nicely decorated church. So if you could help me out so that I have enough funds for the uh, Christmas decorations in memory of a loved one, uh, make a nice donation, especially if you have a job or a steady social security check or a steady pension check, make a nice donation, okay? We always want to be generous. If the Lord has given you, you need to be giving as well can't take it with you, you know. Everybody always needs to remember that. And I'm so very grateful to everybody. After Mass today, make sure you uh, stop in and see. If you don't have a picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe, we've got beautiful pictures. Uh, Margarita, can you hand me that picture? No, that's St. Jude. Okay, that one right there in front. We've got uh, these, stat we have a statues, and then we have these beautiful pictures that I got from Mexico, because I don't have anything from China here, okay? 
This one is absolutely gorgeous. Did you see this one? And you look at her and that's what she reminds you. To always pray and dance in life. That's what I do. That's what she reminds me. There's much more about the, the image. Do you know what the word Guadalupe means? Who knows what the word Guadalupe means? It's an Aztec word that means the lady, the woman, who uh, aplastar, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, who stumps, who, um, how do you, help me out, those of you who speak both languages, who stumps, who with her foot she steps on the serpent. So she's the lady who steps on the serpent. Who's the serpent? The devil. What does the devil bring to our life? I'm speaking. He brings you gloom, darkness, fear, huh? worry. That's Our Lady of Guadalupe. She brings joy, hope, love, prayer, and dancing. So that's why it's so important. I have, uh, I have like 10 Our Lady of Guadalupe's in my house. 10 of them. Everywhere. I wake up looking at her. I go to sleep looking at her. Everything. I eat looking at her. Blessed are